Are you place then? Nah, yours. Yeah, okay. Mm, well, looks like this is going to be a mind-blowing afternoon. Not. <laughs> Seance, now we're talking. I need a glass. You guys don't believe in that, do you? It works, I've done it before. It's spelling something. Miles. No way. No, this is impossible. Who is the smiles, dude? Yeah, Nick, if this is you, it's not, man. What's that meant to mean? Father. Spoonhead. Oh. Love thy father. Who? Who's meant to love their father? No. No, uh, this isn't right, okay? Miles can't speak to us, okay? The guy's dead. I mean, dead is dead. Ah, uh, just down there, thanks. I'd get better bloody treatment at home with my feet up than I would around here. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it's just a uh, temporary staffing crisis. Crisis? Huh. You push the button, no one bloody comes. They're leaving in droves, aren't they? How is he? Will he be all right? I think your husband's developing appendicitis, Mrs. Patterson. I've arranged for him to be transferred to Central. Oh, can I see him? Sure, come sir. Just head up the corridor. Thanks. What's the story, Meredith? Shoving him out the door like that? Come on, Michael. That guy's appendix is tighter than your wallet. Look, theatre's out of the question, post-op ditto. We can't keep him here. Yeah, but we can't just keep tossing people out the door. Well, what do you want me to do? Charge him up to the time his appendix burst, then tell him we can't do any more and recommend a good funeral director? There's no need to exaggerate. This is precisely the time to exaggerate. We've got a ludicrous situation here which could have easily been avoided if you hadn't played silly buggers with the nurses. Me? I have done everything I can to sort this out. I try to get temps in. What happens? Manu goes blabbing to the press and they won't touch this place with a barge pole. So, what are you going to do? Well, I've managed to get some volunteers. They're coming tomorrow. Volunteers? <laughs> That's all we need. Volunteers. They're all trained nurses. Yeah. They are. There wasn't Miles, eh? OK, you explain it then. Well, I can't. It's probably you anyway. Me? You're shifting the glass and spelling out all those words. Oh, you're right. Was I shifting it? Don't know. Didn't feel like it to me. Yeah, you guys better get home. I better clean this up before Mum gets home. It happened, man. It was real. Nick. Hey, Stewie. Love thy father. Nick! Hey, Stuart. G'day. Hi. A little bird tells me you didn't get home last night. I crashed out in one of the exam rooms for a couple of hours. A couple of hours? Right. Tonight, you sleep in your own bed or else. No, I really should stay here. Or else. OK. And, as an added bonus, I happen to know this very good chef who's more than willing to cook you dinner. And maybe throw in one or two little extras as an added bonus. Now you're talking. Uh, charging is Carrie Burton to reception. <laughs> I'll see you later. Can't wait. OK, coffee. 
Mm, cheese. We got some. Where? On the fridge door. Ugh. Oh, yuck, it's all mouldy. You just cut off the edges, it'll be perfectly all right. Don't listen to him, Sam, get cheese. <laughs> Well, OK, ladies and gentlemen, fork over to Kitty Money. Ah, uh, not so fast here, Sam. Mm. Mm. We've got to make sure everything here is within our target goals. Not target goals. Uh-huh. These we certainly do not need. Oh, I love chocolate biscuits. Sam, I thought we agreed to make sacrifices for the good of the cause. Oh, well, who appointed you shopping dictator? I did. Look, <laughs> do we really need toilet paper? Huh? I mean, newspaper works just as well. There you go. I don't want to go to your place. End of argument. We're not arguing. Aren't we? Look, all I said was I wasn't particularly keen on spending the night at your place. That's all. I'm sorry, but I want to spend some time with my son. Well, I'm too tired to deal with Andrew at the moment. Well, if it's such a problem, perhaps we should go our separate ways this evening. Yeah, maybe you're right. And then what happened? Nothing. After the glass broke, that was it. Oh, not good. What? I reckon when Miles died, he had a lot of things that he really wanted to say to you. You know, like unfinished business. The only thing he told me was that I was going to fail my exams. Thanks for the news flash, Miles. No, no, no. Honestly, there was going to be more, but the glass got smashed and you guys got, you know, interrupted. My sisters and I, we had this seance once. We had to talk to our Aunt Sophia. We had to settle an argument about who was supposed to get her pearl earrings or something. And you made contact? Well, no, actually, we ended up communicating with some sort of plumber from Abyssinia or somewhere. But the point is, we got interrupted. The phone rang or something. And boy, was he hacked off. The next day, the very next day, our toilet got blocked up. Believe it or not. I'm serious, guys. You never, ever, ever call off a seance without getting the permission of the spirit who you've called forth. Or else? Yeah, is our dunny going to explode or something? <laughs> <laughs> who can say? If the spirit's been offended, if he goes away angry, who can say what misfortunes he might choose to bestow upon you? Where's Dad? You mean Mr Enigma? You tell me. Is he all right? Well, the way he's been behaving lately, who can say? doing here? Nick must have left it here ages ago. Oh, the tag's broken. It needs a stitch or two. Put on the couch. <sighs> Mum, do you believe in life after death? Well, that's rather an odd question to be asked over dinner. Well, we'll do. Well, I wouldn't put it quite so dramatically, but yes, I do. I believe we live out our allotted span, then pass on, hopefully to a better place. It's God's will. Do you think God's will includes or the spirits being able to communicate with the living? Why are you asking me this? I just want to know if you believe that the dead can contact this living and... You know. Stuart, you're not involved in that occult mumbo-jumbo, are you? Just answer the question, please. But of course they can't. I mean, heaven is heaven, earth is earth, and don't you even begin to think otherwise. Yeah, I just wonder sometimes, that's all. Yeah, well, you should know better. You know, just a stray thought, no big deal. You know, you'll make someone a fine wife one of these days. I don't know. All the sex role stereotyping. You find a man who can cook, sit at a table and looks good in a penny and you immediately assume he'd make a good Sheila. Shame on you, Carrie Burton. My humble apologies. As it happens, cooking is one of my most favourite things. Alongside looking after beautiful women. Oh, sorry. Don't worry about it. Just burnt a hole in my retina the size of a five cent piece, but that's okay. Oh, I'll be out of your way in a second. Thought you and Hone were eating out. Well, we're not. Oh, that smells nice. Did you do all this, the flowers and the candle? Yeah. Well, at least your idea of romance isn't a toasted, scungy sandwich in a fleepit cafe somewhere. Oh, have a nice night. Trouble in paradise. They'll sort it out. Then again, maybe not. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Meredith. See ya. <sighs> well, how are we this morning? Marginally better than last night. Sorry about that. I take it you and Honey have had a row? It's all we seem to be doing at the moment. Work, fight, work, fight. Well, you're both under a lot of pressure at work. Yeah, but it's like we've ground to a halt, you know? There's no passion, no romance, just a big fat nothing. Think you can get over it? Oh, who knows? The scary thing is, this isn't the first time it's happened to me. I know the scenario so well. A few fumbled attempts to get it together and then a brief period where there's some semblance of a spark and then pff, a slide into comfortable, convenient friendship. Comfortable, convenient friendship can be good. But I want passion, Carrie. I want fire. I hate the word friendship. Well, I wouldn't abandon all hope yet. Passion can be rekindled when things like strikes aren't getting in the way. Mm. I hope you're right. Dad? Oh, morning, son. Has Mum already gone to work? Mm. You're not still mad at her? No. Nah. What then? Oh, just thinking. Anything in particular? Not really. Everything and nothing. About how one day you wake up and life's just, well, passed you by. Yeah, it's never that bad, Dad. Oh, I'm not saying it's bad. Just the way it is. You're young, right? And there's this whole world of possibilities stretching out in front of you. And then time passes and one by one those opportunities fall by the wayside. Every single one of them. Yeah, but you can't just stop. I mean, there's always a reason to keep on going. Well, of course, don't get me wrong. I'm saying, if there's something you want to do when you're young, then do it. Don't think about it. Don't talk yourself out of it. Just grab and run with it. Otherwise, one day you'll look back and think, why the hell didn't I do it? Mm. Promise me you won't make that mistake? Yeah, sure, I'll try. Good. Right, if you two take the wards and the patients left in the private rooms, I'll deal with the front desk and help you out as and when I can, OK? Bye, my me. Me too. Ah, here's the rest of the stuff. Um, doctors Fleming and Robita, charge nurse Carrie Burton. We have nurse Compton and nurse... Reynolds. Reynolds. Welcome to the wacky world of Shortland Street. Don't ask. Now, I take it you're both qualified nurses? Oh, yes. I suppose so. So you do have a current practising certificate? Well, no, but I thought it'd be a great opportunity to dust off the old skills and see if they still work. Oh, good. Well, why don't you both wait for me in the staff room? I'd like to have a quick word to Dr McKenna. Righto. Now, before you start, they were the best I could get. In fact, they were all I could get. Fine. I just wonder how useful they'll be in a crisis. I mean, do they realise that nursing has changed somewhat since Michael Savage was Prime Minister? Want a hand with that? No, I got it, mate. Let's stop right where you are. Come here. What is wrong with this picture? Gee, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Chocolate biscuits, Sam. <gasps> so? Fresh orange juice, ham. Look, I thought we agreed to forgo the luxuries of life while we were on strike. Huh. You agreed. Ellie and I didn't. Well, the fact still remains, my friend, that you have blown our pity money on stuff we don't need. Incorrect, Mr Mills. I paid for all this stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Sam. Your solidarity with your striking brothers and sisters. Your generosity. It, well, you, it overwhelms me. Bam. Incorrect again, Mr Mills. Game over. Tell Jenna thanks for the drinks. Oh, Five it. minutes, guys, and we'll get back into it. Man, if they start singing any 60s protest songs, I'm out of here. <laughs> Stewie. Hey, uh, Stuart. you got a minute? Hi. Got a million of them? Well, I was wondering if I could ever talk to you about yesterday. Sure. Ooh. Yeah. See you back at the coffee shop. See ya. Still freaked out about it? Yeah, I suppose so. I've just been thinking. Well, you're not going to get all deep and meaningful, are you? No, it's just... I think it's weird, you know, whether it was actually his spirit or not. Just how Miles pops up again, just when I thought it was all over. Unfinished business. What? 
Well, that's what Serena reckons. There was unfinished business, and that's why Miles tried to contact us. Yeah, that figures. Nah. I don't think the unfinished business was anything to do with Miles. Oh, man, you are getting all deep and meaningful. No, I think it was to do with me, my dad, and... Well, me and you. Us? Well, you know, I mean... When, even when Miles died, it sort of just stuffed up things between you and me and our friendship. I suppose so. I mean, we still talk, you know, but it's just not the same. And I'd, I'd like to get back to how it was. Yeah? I suppose you got a point. I mean, you can be a dork at times, but you're all right. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we can still be mates. That's good. So are you going to help me hide my school C results from the old lady? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Ready? Sure? Yes. Good. Ah, you all right there, Mrs Leach? Fine, thanks. See, I'm not quite out to pasture yet. I'll leave you to finish up. Your drip seems to be running a bit slowly. Ah, that's better. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you tell me what's the matter? Dizzy. Ears ringing. I'm sore. How long have you felt like this? Since the nurse left. Since which nurse left? The one that adjusted the... Oh. What? Oh. Mrs Leach, you're going to be fine. The dizziness and everything should stop in a while. It'll be all right, Doctor. You're going to be fine. It was just a mistake. A mistake. Excuse me. Alison? <laughs> Pass, thanks. But I. I'll have it. I feel like some juice. Did you get any at the supermarket? I sure did. Help yourself. It's in the bag. By hokey. <laughs> the bag. Ellie, can you bring it out while you're there? Oh, man. Did you put tea in this? Mm. Mm. Of course I did. How many? Two, as always. There's something wrong with it. Sam, how can there be something wrong with a tea bag? It's hardly the most complicated piece of machinery on the planet, is it? Uh -huh. There is. You can hardly taste the tea at all. Well, they were fine this morning. Oh, you used the same tea bags. Yeah, have you got a problem with that? Scourge McMillan's. Alison, uh, uh, let me remind you that you are also on strike here. Well, I'm glad, you know, at least some of us can still enjoy the little luxuries of life. Mm. Alison? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> and not only did she not read the label on the drip, but when I told her it was gentamicin and supposed to be administered slowly, I don't think she had the foggiest idea of what I was talking about. If it had been something else, the patient could have been killed. So the volunteers obviously need more supervision. Oh, come on, Michael. If we're running around checking up on them, doesn't that negate the reason they're here in the first place? Absolutely. The whole situation stinks. Too right. Do you think that I don't care what is going on here? Well, I think if you cared a bit more, you'd settle this dispute with the nurses. I am doing everything I can. Well, maybe this will help you do a little bit better. If that dispute is not settled today, now, then the next bunch of people around here that are going on strike will be us. Mm. Must be terrible for Alison, now that Chris has left her and she's all on her own. I'm very worried she might make the wrong choice. Regret it afterwards. Oh, she'll be fine. I mean, even if she does want to keep the baby, it won't be much fun for her. Not if she wants to stay working up here. 
What with a family down country? At least mine were there for me afterwards. I mean, after I gave up Jane. I do love you, you know, Tom Nielsen. Yeah, I know. I'm truly sorry for everything that's happened. You know, for not telling you about Jane. You had your reasons. I didn't want to hurt you. And I was scared you might want to walk out on me. I don't know what I'd do without you, Tom. If they go on strike, I'll sue the bloody lot of them. That is no way to deal with it. Well, what do you want to do? Give in to them? It's called negotiation. It's called weakness. If you hadn't been so bloody namby-pamby about everything, we wouldn't be in this. Me? Place. The reason everybody in this place is either on strike or about to go on strike is because you wouldn't let me talk to the buggers. Bollocks. The clinic is barely functioning as it is. The doctors go on strike. We might as well nail the bloody doors shut. Oh, nonsense. Fire the bloody lot of them, doctors and nurses. What, do we replace them with a collection of garden moans? A bloody sight cheaper. We'll fly in more stuff from Sri Lanka, South Africa, any bloody where. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Well, you'd better get used to the idea pretty quick, hadn't you? We either negotiate our way out of this or I close the clinic down as of tonight. You wouldn't do that, Michael. Try me. You do that and your contract's terminated. Like I said, try me. Is Sir Barbara the last? Right, well, you'd better get going then. Michael. We don't want to keep the ambulance any longer than necessary, do we? Zealand on air.